just so scared. Oh. oh my god. I was last seen alive. Okay. Okay, so where was I? <sighs> so bloody scared. What if they get me tonight? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you're new. My name is Declan, and I make a true crime content here on YouTube in a series in which I like to call Weird World. Welcome to tonight's new video. In tonight's video, I wanted to try something a little bit different and tell you guys a story that I've never told anybody. The reason I've never told anybody is because, well, I wanted to make a little bit of ad sense money off of it. Nah, I'm just kidding. Honestly, the reason I never told anybody is because, well, you're kind of labelled as crazy if you do. And honestly, people just don't believe you. This is my very own paranormal experience. get into the video I want to say that there's going to be a giveaway so stay tuned to the end for the rules on that but to give this story a little bit of a background let me tell you about my house I don't know much but this is what I do know I've stayed in this house for 19 years to this very day of course and I moved here when I was only four years old so this house is kind of all I've ever known it feels like home I love it and I'm very attached but when I was younger there was some really really creepy things that happened and some throughout my late teenage years the house is extremely old and I'm talking like really old. In fact, it's so old that it still has a coal bunker, like built in. And apparently that's not really like a common thing. Living in my very small town, I thought that that was. Apparently it's not. The reason that we moved into this house was a little old lady before us, Mrs. Donnan was her name. She was one of the original owners, so there was nobody else that lived here before her. She went in for an operation and something went really wrong. It was in her throat, I think, and she just never woke up, so... Something went really bad and she ended up passing away and that's how we moved into the house. The house is set up really different. It's like a bungalow, but my bedroom that I'm in right now is in the attic. So there's two bedrooms upstairs and one bedroom downstairs. The bedroom downstairs is my mum's because it's close to a bathroom and it helps with her illness, you know, not going up the stairs and stuff. So when I was younger, it was me and my brother that shared this room that I'm in right now and my sister had the other room. As soon as I moved into this house, my dreams were very weird like they became very scary and ever since then even up till right now i don't really get dreams that are like happy and fluffy bunnies and butterflies are always like really scary or people trying to kill me one of the dreams that i had when i was younger that was reoccurring like all the time was i was never tall enough to look out my window so i could never like quite reach up to peek over but if i went on my bed and kind of peeked over then i could see outside but just like barely i remember seeing this old lady gray hair i could describe her that's actually one thing that i'm really good at is describing all of my dreams everything like every little detail i can get down to the t she was wearing a blue coat and she had tight curly gray hair sometimes it was a little bit messier like it changed in different dreams she would walk past the house and circle it and then sometimes in one of these circles she would look up directly at me and clock eyes with me at this point i would get so scared and i would just like duck and hide behind my windowsill so that she couldn't see me then I would wake up. I'm actually scared telling these stories because I know it might sound like it's just a dream but like <sighs> these traumatized me as a child and you're going to understand why later on in the story why some of these are just extra creepy. Continuing with the dreams I would also have dreams about now I get this might be a little bit far-fetched okay I can see why this is a nightmare that probably many people have. I would go downstairs and right in front of the living room door there would be a demon and I'm talking like with the horns and the big spike. You're probably thinking I'm crazy right now. Hear me out. I would go to run away when I got to the bottom of the stairs and then I would trip and I would fall. How many people have had a dream like that? Maybe not with a demon, but I mean, that could be my very extremely religious childhood just playing a part in that. But how many people have had a dream where they go to run away and they fall and they get up and they fall again? It's common, right? I doubt that was actually something that was real, but I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a perspective of how my dreams really got so bizarre when I moved here and this was all the time. I had that dream hundreds if not thousands of times when I was younger. So fast forward till the night that this entire story is about. The very night that honestly changed my life forever. I was a different kind of child. I was never someone that wanted to like go out and play. 
I was never someone that wanted to stay in and play. I would rather watch other people play. I would watch loads of movies and when it came time to like playing the Xbox or the PlayStation or the Wii or something like that, I would much rather someone else play because I didn't want to like deal with the stress of losing. I would rather they do it and I could just laugh when they failed. Now, I don't want to name any names in this story so I'm going to say this person's name is... Jeff. It is pitch black, it's night time and Jeff is in my room with me. So, we set up at the time it was the Wii. We decide to put on Tomb Raider and it's the anniversary Tomb Raider. So at the time I'm like, oh my god, this is so modern. The graphics are incredible. I'm loving this. So we switch the game on. We're playing the Wii. We're having a great time. Jeff is on the chair right beside me to my right. I'm on another chair. The door is right behind me. We're facing the corner of the room. I would say like maybe two hours go in and we're still playing the game, right? We can't get past this mission. It's really tough. I think it was like a dragon or something like that you had to slay and it was stopping me from... No, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was... That was another part of the game, right? We passed that, yes. The part of the game that I was stuck at was I had to get water flowing from the outside of the mansion to the inside and I just couldn't figure it out. So Jeff is trying his hardest. I keep looking at him. I keep laughing. You know, it's really funny. He keeps missing it, but it's a good night. So at least by the end of the night, if I don't complete it, I've had good fun. So that's one time he fails and I find it so funny. I look at him to laugh at him and kind of like, ha ha, like you never pass, like blah, blah, blah. And as my eyes are adjusting from the screen, the TV screen, now bear in mind, it's not like one huge giant plasma. It's like a 20 inch screen. It's not that big. I wasn't sitting so close. I look at him and as my eyes are adjusting, I'm seeing his face. And then all of a sudden I see this other face right on his shoulder. Honestly, like I Honestly, this face was grinning at me. And I'm trying to work out what I'm seeing. And I'm actually shaking when I'm telling this story. Like, I'm actually shaking. As I said, as my eyes are adjusting and I'm looking at him, I see this face appear. And I'm trying to work out what I'm seeing. And I just look at him and I stand up and I back up into the corner of the room and I just scream. I'm screaming the loudest. Meanwhile, this face that I thought if I blinked, it would go away. I thought if I like done that, it would go away. I'm opening my eyes wider and wider to try and, maybe my eyes haven't adjusted. Maybe, maybe I'm seeing something. Is it something in the background? No, face on his shoulder. He is, you know, oh my God, what's going on? Like, why is he screaming? I am hysterical. And then I just hit the light and oh, in the space of the time that I hit the light, that was a fly by the way, in the space of the time I hit the light, the face gone. Now this face, I can describe to a T. The hair, jet black, slipped back. And it was as if someone had taken a comb like this. This is so broken, I need to get a new comb. But it had left, like, if I do that, it's probably not gonna work on my bleached hair, but the kind of lines, you see that? It had left lines like that, but it was gelled back. There was a lot of gel. It was as if they had like a leather coat on, cause I could see like this part, it was shiny. So I, I could see it, it, like just off the cuff of Jeff's shoulder. His face was going like this, grinning at me. The eyes were smiling and the teeth were showing just a little bit. It was as if they had laughed at the fact that I had seen them. That's what it felt like. Like they were waiting that whole time for me to see them. And I honestly thought by like blinking, they would disappear. But that's what freaked me out even more. I flicked the light on and I just ran out of the room. I ran downstairs into my mom's bedroom. I was crying. She had to calm me down for about 20 minutes. I could not breathe. She was asking me, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Jeff came down the stairs. He was like, I have no idea what's happened. Like, I don't know what's going on. He just started screaming. They thought that I'd had some sort of fit from watching the Wii too much. We'd done some Googling and it said, you know, the Wii can cause hallucinations, like you can see things with it. So they really had it down to that. But in my mind, I knew I wasn't hallucinating. I knew what I seen. When I had calmed down enough, I tried to explain it to my mum. And I was like, mum, I seen a face. Like I, there was a face up there. I swear to God, like, please believe me. Don't think I'm crazy. Obviously like he didn't it back and trying to like tell that story to someone. And just, I guess the more you try and explain it and the more that you try and prove that it's real, the less it seems real. It, it kind of seems like you're exaggerating. Not lying, but exaggerating. When I was explaining it to my mum, she said to me that I was describing my papa. The papa that I never met. Now this is where the story really took a turn that really made it real life for me. When I left that room that night, I could not go back in it for four years. Four years I couldn't go in this bedroom, which meant I had no bedroom. Now the fact I'm telling you guys this on YouTube, even though it's hella embarrassing, must show that this story is true. I had to sleep in my mum and dad's bedroom for four years. I could not 
go anywhere in the house alone. I would not be left alone. Sometimes at night time when I would go to the bathroom, I would get stuck in there. I would be too scared to open the door and walk from the bathroom to my mum's bedroom where I would then sleep on the floor because I was so scared like this is how dramatic this was like I would rather sleep on a floor in my mum and dad's bedroom than go upstairs into my own bedroom where my own stuff was where I had my own tv and everything else like I just refused once all of that had finally came to an end and I was approaching an age where I was like right I need my own space I decided that I was going to start coming back up into my room now the feeling never really went away whenever I would face that desk that faced the wall it felt like someone was watching me obviously I'm in my bedroom now I'm not as scared as I was when I was a little kid but I guess I've kind of, with the amount of things that's happened, grown used to it. I would walk downstairs. Now, as I'm going through either the living room door or the kitchen door, I would always catch out the corner of my eye just seconds, seconds of this, of a woman, a, a lady, I don't know what age, don't know any details, can't see them. She'd just be sitting there with her hands on her knees, looking forward. Sometimes she would look at me like that and then look away. But by the time I would, oh my God, there's someone there and look, they'd be gone. And I would think, are my eyes just focusing in the dark but to see a silhouette of a person instead of the furniture that's actually there like the couch or a lamp or a photo frame to see a person that's weird I'm still trying to reason with myself I'm still trying to tell myself nah nah maybe it was something else I've seen right it's just it's my eyes so then it gets weirder as I step out in my bedroom into the hallway and I flip the light switch on I hear this it was like a bang Right, I can't, I can't really remember it specific, but it, it was a loud thump like that. It was the light above me exploding. And I don't mean it just like, you know, went pop and, you know, blue and then you look inside it and you can see the wee spring moving about. It wasn't like that. At the same time, I also felt it was like a punch to this shoulder, to my right shoulder. It was like someone punched me. This was really really sore and at the same time as I went to step off the step I almost lost my footing and went down it was so close my heart was pounding because I thought oh my god I nearly fell downstairs in the dark there like that could have been a disaster once I had kind of came to terms with well I never fell I'm fine all happening in seconds I realized what the hell was that so I get my phone I'm shining it on the floor I look and I see the bulb of the light the bulb had shot out hit me on the shoulder it was so forceful it had left like a big red mark on my shoulder where it had hit me the weirdest thing though the bulb wasn't smashed at all wasn't smashed but it was jet black i look up into the ceiling the metal part that's around the bulb is stuck inside so the bulb had separated from the metal part it hadn't blown it had shot out like a a bullet had shot out and hit me with such force it nearly shoved me down the stairs. Now I'd never told my mum that I'd felt a punch on my shoulder, I'd just said, you know, oh the bulb had shot out, it hit me, it was really weird, like, do you find that weird? Like I'm trying to like ease in telling people that some weird things are going on in this house and it's been happening for a long time, especially to me, or so I thought. So when my sister still lived here, some weird things happened to her as well. One of these things being when my sister come home from work, she would have her dinner downstairs go upstairs, sort her bed, come downstairs again, brush her teeth, get like a glass of water and go back upstairs and be ready for bed. She said to me, only, and this was only recently, probably like five, six months ago she told me this story. I wish she told me this when I was younger because so many weird things happened to me. She told me that sometimes she would be woken up roughly about three in the morning. I think she said it was that time all the time or close to that time. She would feel the edge of her bed get lower and lower and lower as if someone was slowly sitting on it trying not to make a noise but you could feel that someone was on the mattress because it was slouching towards one side when she opened her eyes nobody was there if you thought that's the weird things came to an end then you were wrong because there's so much more one time and this was i would say maybe about two years ago so this is relatively quite new i was going downstairs and my stairs have two landings in the very middle and that's where the hall window is where you can look out to the garden and stuff and i heard my mum in her bedroom so her door was wide open and I was talking to her and I was like, oh, just something random, I don't know, I forget. I was having this whole conversation with her. At first, I just heard her make a noise. And I was like, oh, mommy, you're in there. I had heard her speaking and then laugh at something. So I was like, mum, mum. And I thought she was ignoring me. I go down to the second platform and I'm like, mum, I know you're in there. And she sometimes does this thing where she'll like hide from me or I'll go into her bedroom and she'll be like, as if she's sleeping. And I'm like, mum, you're sitting up and your phone's open. You're not sleeping. Like she would do little things like that. So I just thought this is what she's doing. And I was just like, mum. I know you're there. So then I start walking down, you know, thinking I'm so clever. I get to almost go in her bedroom and I hear her in the kitchen, which is directly under my bedroom on the other side of the house. There was something, someone in her bedroom having a conversation with me. I could hear them giggle, I could hear them laugh and I thought it was my mum playing games with me. When she came through, I was like, oh, 
are you joking? What's happened? Mum, I thought you were in the bedroom. I said there was someone in there. I walked in her bedroom and I'm looking around like, again, my mum didn't really believe me. She was just kind of like, oh, Declan, you're hearing stuff or you're you're watching too many scary films and this is all going straight to your mind or whatever. She just like shrugged it off. Now at this point, this is where it starts to affect both me and my mum. Now my mum is a single parent and at this point, my brother and sister had moved out. So it's just us two. I come downstairs one night and I say to her, she's up really late and I say, mum, I can smell cigarette smoke all around the house. Now she doesn't smoke, I don't smoke, I've never smoked in my life. Now the reason I actually come down is because my mum used to smoke and I thought it was her and I was going to like catch her in the act and be like, aha, I was right, I knew you never stopped. That one was really left up in the air because, I mean, I, how do you explain it? Whenever I mention these things to my mum, she freaks out. I personally think that she's had experiences but she just won't tell me. The most recent one was probably about two weeks ago. Now I've been filming a vlog and I've been decorating the side bedroom. It used to be my sister's bedroom. She doesn't live here anymore. I actually use it for my kitten, my little cat, Penelope. She goes in there when I'm filming a video like this so that she doesn't run crazy. And it's also a spare room for when anybody wants to come stay. But my mum is directly below that bedroom. And sometimes she'll shout up and she'll say to me, Declan, go see Penelope. She's running crazy. She's going like from the windowsill to the wardrobe to the bed. She's jumping around everywhere. She gets really, really hyper at night time. So I go through. And I say to her, I'm like, pen pen, behave, like I'm trying to work, come on, like I play with her, I give her treats, I kiss, I cuddle her, and then usually she just falls back asleep. That's happened before, okay? So that's happened. So when I got up this time, I'm like, oh my God, I go through, I'm like, Penny, I'm trying to work, I open the door, and there she is, sound asleep, lying on the bed. Big double bed all to herself, she's cuddled up, snoozing away, you know, stretching out, loving life. And I'm like, oh, that's weird, like maybe she's too clever and she just jumped up in bed and pretended to be asleep, I don't know. I go back through to my bedroom and I start working on a video again, typing in my laptop, really, really engrossed in it. And my mum texts me and she's like, well, you get the cat, she's running crazy. I'm like, okay, fine. I got up again. And at this point I'm really stressed because I'm trying to work, you know, I, I need quietness. And she's still cuddled up and I'm like, what is going on? Like, what is my mum hearing? So I just kind of shrug it off. Mum falls asleep. I'm like, okay, like she's not running crazy, but okay. I finish my video. It gets later on at night time and I go and get my cat and I get into bed. I cuddle her up. She's like such a cuddly cat. She sleeps under the covers with me and I always know she's there because I can feel her. Now about two, three hours go past and I'm snoozing. I am zonked to the world. I'm exhausted. I had worked on a video that was like 10,000 words to write out. It was going to take me ages to say it. I was really, really stressed. I was just trying to get like a really good sleep and shut off for the night. And I hear thump, 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 thump. And it keeps going and going and going. And I wake up and I'm like, oh my God. It's like Penelope's going crazy. And she's in my room and she's running around, right? She's maybe seen a fly, whatever. I look up and I'm, well, I sit up and I'm like a zombie. I'm like, looking around my room trying to see her and I can't see her anywhere and I'm like Penelope oh, I don't want to like I don't want to have to get up like I'm tired and then I move my feet and I feel her under there I lift up the covers and there she is completely zonked so I go back to sleep I, I don't know how long goes past say about an hour again because it was enough for me to fall asleep again I hear thump 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 this time I just open my eyes and I'm ready and I stay completely silent I don't move I don't make it known that I'm awake and I hear thump 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 so I sit up and I can still feel Penelope, she's under the covers, she's sound asleep and I can hear it coming from next door in that guest bedroom. I'm gonna go through there and I'm gonna see something. I'm finally gonna see something and I start to get up and it stops. I don't hear it at all. I say to my mum when she wakes up later, I'm like, mum, I know you heard the thumping last night. She's like, oh, that cat, she's running crazy. I'm like, well, it wasn't that cat. I goes, that cat was sleeping with me when I heard the same thumping. Again, nothing was there. Unexplainable. I still have really crazy nightmares. They were starting to become real experiences. I never seen that face again that I seen on Jeff's shoulder. But then the more that I sat for ages trying to think about it, I remembered where I had seen that face from. I remembered something. I remember when I was younger, I used to wake up when my brother and me shared this bedroom. And I would always have this dream where someone was at the bottom of my bed. This person had gelled slicked back black hair they would look at me and they had this long trench coat on that was the same face and they were standing at the bottom of my bed my sister also told me stories about the bottom of our bed where someone was sitting on it and i'm thinking there's so many things that keep tying up that make sense here like we've all had similar experiences different but similar gists to them so there you guys have it that is my paranormal experiences that have happened in this house now i don't expect you to believe them because I i'm just someone that's telling a video you know it's like, like i get it that's the reason i've never really opened up told anybody these stories because it comes with so much doubt there's always people out there that's like there's an explanation to all of this and man would i love to hear them leave it in the comments below when i found out my family had all experienced it i was like oh my god ghosts are real like you cannot convince me otherwise 
Anyways, just to add in a lighter subject to this video, I want to do a giveaway just to say thank you to you guys for supporting me for just over a year now. And just with really tough times going on, I just want to brighten someone's day. The giveaway will consist of, the prize will be anything that you want. As long as it is makeup related. I want to do a makeup giveaway because I love makeup. So if you comment your favourite eyeshadow palette, highlighting palette, individual highlighter, it can be anything that you want, I will buy you it. To start with, all you have to do, and just in case you don't follow these rules, just read the description below, it will all be in there. You, one, have to be subscribed, duh. Two, give this video a thumbs up. Three, follow the Instagram accounts that are on screen right now. Four, leave a comment down below. One, telling me what you think of this video. I'd love to read them, of course, as I do with every video. And two, what product you would like. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So good luck to everybody that enters. I wish you all could win. That would be amazing. But um, there you guys have it. That is my paranormal experience. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're new, please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. We would love to have you here as part of my little family here on YouTube. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.